Homeward Bound, August 9, Power in the Church But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Acts 1, verse 8 When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The preaching of the Word will be of no avail without the continual presence and aid of the Holy Spirit. This is the only effectual teacher of divine truth. Only when the truth is accompanied to the heart by the Spirit will it quicken the conscience or transform the life. We might be able to present the letter of the Word of God. We might be familiar with all its commands and promises. But unless the Holy Spirit sets home the truth, no souls will fall on the rock and be broken. No amount of education No advantages, however great, can make one a channel of light without the cooperation of the Spirit of God. The sowing of the gospel seed will not be a success unless the seed is quickened into life by the dew of heaven. Before one book of the New Testament was written, before one gospel sermon had been preached after Christ's ascension, the Holy Spirit came upon the praying apostles. Then the testimony of their enemies was, Ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Christ has promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to his church, and the promise belongs to us as much as to the first disciples. But, like every other promise, it is given on conditions. There are many who believe and profess to claim the Lord's promise. They talk about Christ and about the Holy Spirit, yet receive no benefit. They do not surrender the soul to be guided and controlled by the divine agencies. We cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is to use us. Through the Spirit, God works in His people to will and to do of His good pleasure. But many will not submit to this. They want to manage themselves. This is why they do not receive the heavenly gift. Only to those who wait humbly upon God, who watch for His guidance and grace, is the Spirit given. The power of God awaits their demand and reception. This promised blessing, claimed by faith, brings all other blessings in its train. It is given according to the riches of the grace of Christ and he is ready to supply every soul according to the capacity to receive. In his discourse to the disciples, Jesus made no mournful allusion to his own sufferings and death. His last legacy to them was a legacy of peace. He said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. The Desire of Ages, pages 671 and 672.